Armistices end wars, but do not create the conditions for lasting peace. They traditionally are followed by peace conferences to resolve the problems that led to the war. The terms of the July 27, 1953 armistice that ended the Korean War called for a political conference to settle through negotiation the questions of withdrawal of all foreign forces from Korea, the peaceful settlement of the Korean question, etc. It is not widely remembered today that a Korean peace conference took place. What happened? Why did negotiations fall short? And what lessons can be learned from the 1954 peace conference? In spring 1954, high-level representatives from 19 countries met for almost two months in Geneva to resolve the Korean question. The delegations were led by foreign ministers and future prime ministers, including U.S. Secretary of State John Foster Dulles, Zhou Enlai of China, Vyacheslav Molotov of Russia, and Anthony Eden from Britain. The North Korean delegation was led by General Nam Il, who had signed the armistice. Because China and North Korea would not attend the conference convened by the United Nations, and because the United States did not recognize Communist China, the Geneva Conference was convened by four powers, the United States, Soviet Union, United Kingdom, and France. The United States invited the unified command countries that had fought in the Korean War, including the Republic of Korea, and the Soviet Union invited China and North Korea. How to invite countries to the Geneva Conference was not the only problem. Who would chair the meeting and how seating would be arranged were major obstacles. In the end, the chair rotated between the UK, the Soviet Union, and Thailand. Although Thailand had been part of the Unified Command, it was considered suitably neutral. The seating arrangement was not resolved until the night before the conference was to begin, and was finally worked out between the UK and USSR. Although some historians argue that the participants never expected the Geneva Conference to succeed, declassified documents from U.S., Russian, and Chinese archives show that each made detailed preparations to negotiate and intended to reach an agreement. The Chinese in particular wanted a successful outcome. This was their first international negotiation, and they believed that if successful, it would pave the way for their involvement in future international talks. The 1954 Geneva Conference came close to succeeding. There are four major issues. Withdrawal of foreign forces, elections, proportionality, and international supervision. Although initial positions were far apart on all four issues, weeks of negotiations led to agreement on most of them. On the withdrawal of foreign forces, general agreement was reached for a staged simultaneous withdrawal of foreign troops by both sides. Regarding elections, South Korea at first opposed holding new elections throughout the peninsula, arguing that it had carried out its own internationally supervised elections, so they would only need to be held in the north. In the end, however, South Korea agreed to participate in new peninsula-wide elections. Proportionality was a major issue for North Korea. Because its population was smaller than South Korea's, it argued that it would be disadvantaged within a new representative government. A compromise was reached whereby the newly elected assembly would be proportional, but North Korea would be equally represented with South Korea on a new All-Korea Commission that would be tasked with designing the new unified government structure. The issue on which the Geneva Conference foundered was international supervision. Both sides acknowledged that supervision would be necessary during implementation of a peace agreement. The United States, South Korea, and the Allies insisted that supervision be provided by the United Nations. UN commissions had operated in Korea from 1946 to 1950 and had supervised 1948 South Korean elections. China, North Korea, and the Soviet Union demanded that the peace agreement be supervised by a neutral nations commission, such as had been agreed to monitor the armistice. But knowing that the armistice neutral nations supervisory commission, comprising Czechoslovakia, Poland, Sweden, and Switzerland, had been deadlocked and ineffective, the United States and allies were unwilling to accept. With neither side willing to compromise on the issue of supervision, the Geneva Conference ended inconclusively on June 15, 1954. There are two interesting footnotes to the story of the 1954 Geneva Conference. 
First, South Korean President Syngman Rhee agreed to send a delegation only under heavy pressure from the United States. But the South Korean delegation, led by Byung Yong Tae, was flexible and creative, offering their own compromise solutions. Second, although the United States was first among equals on the Allied delegation, the UK, Canada, and Belgium in particular had their own strongly held views, leading to negotiations within the negotiations. What lessons can be learned in the 1954 peace conference? First, compromises agreed to in Geneva show that finding a solution to the Korean question was not beyond reach. Second, even after the Korean War, negotiators on all sides took it as their task to find a way to unify the peninsula. That is a perspective that should not be forgotten.